Hello, Dr. Della here, and today I just want to talk about sugar. Not just about, you know, how bad it is for you, how it causes inflammation and cancer and poor mental focus and all those things. Not going there. We've got a lot of posts this week that are going to cover that. We know that sugar is really bad for our systems, okay? I'm going to talk about the different kinds of sugar and why we may not want to be using certain, uh, I always call them fake sugar replacements, okay? So we're going to go over the natural sugar replacements and the not so natural. So um, first off, I want to say if you're looking at something that says sugar free, just like fat free things, dude, those are out with the 80s. We do not want to be having sugar free and fat free things on labels. It just means that there's more garbage put in place that our body doesn't even know what it is, chemicals or whatnot, to mask the fact that there's no fat in it or no sugar in it. A lot of the no sugar or sugar free substitute um, items are contain aspartame. Aspartame is a no good, nasty, fake sugar. Hard on your liver, hard on your nervous system, um, can cause migraine headaches, just a lot of yucky stuff. Do not substitute sugar with aspartame. So definitely look for that one and avoid it. I would much rather you just eat sugar, cane sugar. So what about these other sugar replacements? We've got um, stevia is very common, erythritol, um, coconut sugar, agave, honey, all of these and more, right? Sugar substitutes. So let me start by saying we know how sh addicting sugar is, right? They say it's more addicting than cocaine. Like our brains just love this stuff, right? It's like you eat some of it and our body just wants even more. It's just like craves it, okay? And when you feed it sugar, it just wants more. The crazy thing is you can feed it stevia, and it will still want something sweet. You can feed it erythritol and it still is craving this sweetness, okay? So when you're feeding your brain, your body, something that tastes sugar, like sugar, even though it's a healthier sugar alternative, your body is still gonna continue that craving pattern. And when you're constantly craving something that tastes sweet, guess what? It's gonna be harder and harder for you to always avoid eating sugar. So. Why do we want to continue this pattern? We've got to stop this pattern. We've got to stop you from making, having such bad cravings, right? And I think that starts with taking away all of the fake sugars. We don't want to eat things that taste sweet because then we're going to continue craving things that taste sweet. It really will only take about um, a 10 day reset. Our 10 day um, detoxification program can really help just clean eating, reset your palate um, so that you're not making having these cravings, then maybe you have it here or there, not such a big deal. It doesn't make this giant cascade of sugar cravings happen for you. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about is the oral thalamic pathway. So that means if you taste something, your brain is like, I know what that is. I know where it goes. I know what to do with it. I'm gonna prepare for that. So if we, just like if we taste a supplement, so a lot of the supplements I use are made from whole foods. So sometimes I encourage patients to chew those supplements or taste them before they swallow them so their brain can prepare to use them properly and faster in their system. Just like if you taste something sweet, but it's not even real sugar, your body is like, ding, 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 sugar's coming down the pipes, insulin, get ready to go. We've got to like balance this stuff out. But then in your sugar, blood sugar, doesn't actually go up. So your oral thalamic pathway told you, told your body that something sweet was coming and to prepare with an insulin response. But then you didn't actually have an increase in your blood sugar because it wasn't sugar. So a little bit of that insulin can still impact blood sugar by actually decreasing your blood sugar. Now, not only are you craving more, um, but then if you don't eat anything, you're adrenals have to send signals to your liver to break down sugars to get that blood sugar balanced so it's really taking your blood sugar on a roller coaster okay we want to avoid that all of that is causing inflammation in your body wiping out your adrenals even more no bueno right okay so this is a case for not eating sugar at all and a case for why maybe substituting isn't always the healthiest way because you're still going to continue those cravings and still messing with blood sugar okay so then let's talk about some of the sugar alternatives. So we've got, so I'll just talk about a few of the common ones. So stevia. Stevia is linked to headaches. A lot of people get really bad headaches from eating stevia. So I would just 
correlate, you know, if you can tolerate it and it seems like a good substitute to have here and there, great, fine. Um, but if you find yourself having these headaches out of the blue, think about when you're consuming stevia and if that might be related because there's a very um, high correlation there. Erythritol, this is an alcohol sugar substitute. They call it a diabetic sugar. Super common cause of diarrhea. So if you are having bouts of really loose stools and unsure where that's coming from, maybe check in your erythritol consumption, okay? Um, agave, so agave, you know, if you take it right from the plant, great sweetener, right? But the way they process agave and they jar it up and give it to you like it's honey or whatever, all this highly processed agave, agave, when you get it in the States, is just as highly processed as high fructose corn syrup. So I would avoid agave. It is this great idea of this plant sugar, but once it's processed and brought to us here, not something we want to be consuming. So no agave. Then we've got honey, molasses, um, uh, maple syrup. All of those things are my most favorite alternatives to sugar because they are whole foods, which means it takes your body a while to break those down, break them apart, and it's a slower incline of your blood sugar rather than the cane sugar, which is just like a peak, okay? So that's what I got for you on sugar. Ideally, you just wanna leave it behind completely, but if you must, I would say go with honey, molasses, or maple syrup as your sweetener to avoid some of the side effects from some of the other more natural sugars is what they're called. Um, but in general, you really want to detox from the stuff. So addicting and dude, don't be a slave to those sugar cravings. Cut them out. Try some, um, ask your doctor about trying some gymnema. It's an herb that you can suck on before you swallow it. It deadens your sweet receptors in your um, palate so that when you eat something sweet, it's less rewarding to your brain to help cut those um, cravings. Um, what else? That's what I got for sugar. Say no to the sugar. You don't need it. You're better than that. Eat some protein when you're craving sugar because the other thing that, um, reason you crave sugar is because your blood sugar is low and protein is the best fuel for blood sugar just to stabilize it. So pick up a pepperoni stick and put down the Snickers bar. You can do it. Uh, check out that 10 day detox link is in our bio. It's a great way to get your blood sugar ready to go. No more cravings.